Welcome back to TW 2016, The Branding Solution, and we are here in WWE No Mercy for the Shockwave pay-per-view event, and we're going to have a few pre-show matches only using current talent, and we had a four-way ladder, a four-way tag team match, and the club picked up the victory here. And there's a good chance that these are going to be the majority of the Shockwave Tag Team Money in the Bank match. But I haven't made my final decision because I've got another four I could use. We then have Austin Aries defeating Damien Sandow. Uh, we, we're just trying to give Aries that last little push if we are going to cash in Money in the Bank in this time that he has left. Could be tonight, could not be. We'll see. We can have a nice big 30-man battle royal just to keep everyone on the card. I didn't really pick the winner, so Bubba Ray was the one that got the win. Uh, Rampage got the most elimination. No, it was the final elimination. Michael Dante got the most eliminations. Um, yeah, it's just to make sure everyone has a match on the card to keep them happy. We then have a three on three where we gave Killian Dane, Marty's girl, and Kane a victory. I got Killian Dane to make the pinfall. But that was most important because if I am going to push those two, they need to start going now. And Cesaro defeated Braun Strowman and Mark Henry, then Cesaro defeated Mark Henry. Yeah, I didn't want to get Braun to be the one defeated. Uh, Mark Henry has all the warning signs, which is too much to worry about. But the only warnings was Mark Henry, so that is good. I'm happy with that. We start the main show by looking at all of the guys in the main four matches. We got Rusev versus Punk, Cena versus Styles, Nakamura versus Samoa Joe, and Zayn versus Okada. Yep, so we just threw it out. Great start. First match of the night. Sheamus defeated Oblivion Max on his return to pay per view. Um, yeah, we were always going to have to give Sheamus the victory for this return. Even though Max is trying to help Barrett, you can't have him come back and be losing Sheamus. So, and I, hopefully he hasn't got. Well, he was holding back, and that was so. Yeah, and Oblivion was holding back. I'm not too worried. That's a good start. And afterwards, Sheamus goes up to Drew and says, "Well, I got my side of the job done. You're up next. Well, later in the show, if not next. I chose to keep them a bit further apart." We went with the tag team title match next, where the Briscoes retained over the Hart Dynasty. I suppose this made sense. I know we put the Hart Dynasty back together, and it was like a push to put them in a title picture. It, it was to see how good they could get against probably the best team on Shockwave. And we've shown that they got a quality match out of it. That's two high 70 rated matches so far. But afterwards, the club come out and attack the Briscoes. They ain't done with them yet. They still feel they should get another title match. But we've had the club and the Briscoes done back and forth for nearly a year. And the, Br the Briscoes have always come out on top. And the club are just tired of it. That's why they got the pre-show win. It's just to show that they are probably the second best team on this roster. So they really are for them. In another one, they didn't click. What a shame. And Sami Zayn had a one-day-left injury. It was touch and go whether he would be fit for this match. It, he could work through the injury. That's why it's so early on the card. I didn't want it to affect the final rating. I gave Okada the victory, though. Um, yeah, um, there's a reason for it. And we'll see in the next segment. Um, it was only the working injury booking decisions, fair enough. And I couldn't really risk not having this match on the card. So yeah, I'm happy. Cesaro comes out and attacks Sami Zayn with a ladder. Is this Cesaro trying to say that he wants to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match? And he doesn't want Sami to have a chance of being in there? We'll see on the next episode of Shockwave. In another brilliant match, I'm really, I know they're not the best of the best, but they're all 
75 or above on this card so far. But we had Tyler Breeze defeat Cody Rhodes after Zack Ryder and Braun Strowman distracted Cody. Yeah, we went with this pull. Um, Cody didn't kick off, which I'm really surprised about. I didn't even have... Uh, I had to keep Cody strong, but he didn't kick off before that. I feel like this was a good decision. And afterwards, Tyler Breeze, with the rest of the fashion capital of the world, offers Cody a chance to join. And Mitch Cody just shakes his head and walks up the ramp. Tyler looks angry, but still. Tyler is still trying to recruit to the fashion capital of the world. He, he's the leader, and we have Braun, the bodyguard, Zack Ryder, the social network ambassador, and the board villains as the um, vintage designers, shall we say. And another quality match again. We have Drew McIntyre defeat Bad News Barrett. When Seamus ran in, when it looked like Bad News was setting up for the bull hammer, that's what we'll write it down, and that's what we want it to be. It looked like Bad News was ready to get his bull hammer ready to knock out Drew, but Seamus got involved and had his defence number two for Drew McIntyre. William Regal hypes up his team. He's like, well, Drew's got his gold. Maybe it's time that Seamus got a chance to go for some gold of his own. So we're hinting that Seamus potentially going for a title. Either the world or the US are the only ones he can go for. And what? No, oh, the worst match of the night so far. Nakamura retains his US title. I thought they would have good chemistry. A 70 is still... That's my weakest match of the night. I'm happy. So we'll just skip over this. But Okada comes out after the match and offers Nakamura a handshake. These two will meet at Money in the Bank because Sami Zayn Okada was a number one contenders match for the for a shot at the US title. We're going to go put it into Money in the Bank, which takes them out of the ladder match, which I don't think that'd be very good. Also, it's almost a year since they had their first match, so I think we set this up really well because now it's going to be for something rather than just to show which one is going to be the next big um, Japanese star. And Adam Cole defeats Bobby Roode in what is now the best match of the night in 82. Um, yeah, I had to go with Adam Cole over Bobby. Bobby's got the declining physical ability. We always have to start looking to the next generation of stars. And Adam Cole had a great year last year was the European champion for a good spell of it and now he's just going to start facing a few more main eventary people to see who, where he can go so yeah um, as you can see uh, we had it before Bobby Roode but this match had no negatives so that's great to see Austin Aries then cuts a promo showing his money in the bank saying that he needs this opportunity it's his last chance to make a name for himself in the WWE and this is going to be his chance this money in the bank briefcase when he's ready to cash it in and even this it's like just amazing to see uh, Kenny Omega defeated Neville by submission I, I was going to look to make Neville Hill a bit like he is in real life, but this game has him set as an awful hill. So his, I thought I'd tease it for a couple of weeks. He then cuts a promo. It might not happen now then. But we got the idea was to bring him down so he could then go on a bit of a rampage for the cruiserweights to get a title shot. So and I wanted a good hill cruiserweight I thought he could do. Maybe not then, we'll see. Oh my god, that's my best ever match. It's as simple as that. We built this match up to be something perfect. AJ Styles defeats John Cena, meaning John Cena has to go another year and a half before he gets another title 
match. SummerSlam 2018 is the earliest he can have a title match. Um, this even had... They actually... I put that it all out, didn't I? Um, I thought I'd take the chance. He couldn't deal with it sooner. For AJ... Wow. He actually got the bonus for going all out, so yeah. That is a match of the year contender. And then Cena grabs the mic, and he kind of just sort of says, well, the better man won tonight, but now I need to refocus on where I'm going to go with my career for the next 15 months. Because Cena has no titles to fight for. He has very little going for him now. We we did this on purpose, really. Um, I want Styles and Cena out of title pictures. I need to build on this show, and if I give myself the opportunity to put one in, I will put them in by accident or deliberately. But I can put them in tag matches to build up the storylines. So John Cena is going to go into a new rivalry with somebody. After this show, we haven't made our full decision. We may even focus on King of the Ring. We'll see where it goes. And another brilliant match for doing a 95. Well, um, Rusev defeats CM Punk by pinfall to retain his title again. That's two 90A star matches. If this show doesn't get a good 90, I think this should be easily get into the 90s now. Rusev celebrates with his title. To end the show, there is no cash in from Austin Aries. I decided against it here because I feel that match didn't need it. Um, I feel like Rusev, Punk, Cena, and Star was all going to have to go into new storylines now. Things I can work the storylines up to going into WrestleMania. It's very unlikely the four will even be mixing with each other. So the other big thing, I need a challenger for Money in the Bank, which may just be anybody but I do have a, a, an idea of what I could do otherwise I haven't made my plans for Punk, Cena or Style yet we now have a 94 rated show that is officially the best show they are the best matches so let's give some speeches to uh, John Cena uh, he's actually here um, Rusev and AJ Styles and praise great performance that was awesome they are awesome uh, pleased pleased and pleased so we'll head back to the main screen and see just how much that's impacted everything else on these shows and we are back to the main screen so let's check the news El Generico is re good. He's now fit. Oh dear God. Bailey is pregnant. Great. All of this hard work I put together to create a big story for Bailey has gone out the window. This is going to suck. Um, this does mean we have uh, June, July, August. So her last match could be SummerSlam. Um, so we could do the whole idea that it's a sort of suspension of all or nothing match for her. Seems a bit risky, but it could work. Um, Todd Phillips has can have his contract renewed. Have you failed a drugs test again? Oh god, you're fired then. It's twice now. I tell him to rehab it forever to get back. Um... But overall, I'm happy with everything apart from this storyline. And in story, it's not even a storyline, it's real life. Um, the storylines themselves, the US, that got creamed. Which, that was just on the pre-show, I think. A 91 for that. The respect of 97. I really feel like I can't end this storyline now. <laughs> But we could put somebody who doesn't respect Styles 
into that. Just rude. Okay. That didn't get touched. That's really good. That's really good. And the Battle of Britain is really good. Um, creative meeting. Nobody's new on that. Um, I'm not sure how Gotch got to the top. The usual people on there. Brian Kendrick was number one. He's been fired. He's off. Probably trying to sue me like the rest of them do. Um, let's just check this popularity thing. This is yeah, I found this a lot easier to look for how popular the guys are in America now. So you can actually filter it properly as well. <coughs> but in the USA, Rusev is now up to 91. Punk's up to 90. Um, AJ Styles is at the highest he's been in a long time. And John Cena's crashed down to 81, which is surprising. And Oscar's back ahead of Sasha. God, it just keeps happening to me. Um, so as you can see, Shockwave, if I can filter... Uh, I can only filter WWE. And, uh, okay, it's not really worth it. Um, Otherwise, there's Generico. Nakamura's gone up a bit. And Okada. Otherwise, I feel like we haven't really gone the right direction with this. But still, we're happy. We're, we're happy with everything that's happened. The only thing is, I wish it could have been even better. Um, yes, yeah, so. I've lost a this thing. Let's see if this has helped us in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, I think that's actually gone up. Okay, Puerto Rico was, no, it's probably gone down. But never mind. We'll be back with Monday Night Raw. Let me know if this was one of the best shows I put together. And we'll be back on, will be tomorrow if you watch this brand new. Thank you for watching.